Democratic Alliance leader John Steinhazen is in war on Ukraine on a six-day fact-finding mission. Steinhazen is currently at uh, refugee camps and uh, meeting with various stakeholders. He now joins us uh, from uh, the capital, Kiev. John, good evening. Thank you very much uh, for your time joining us uh, today. Uh, what is really at the heart of this fact-finding mission? What do you hope you will uh, achieve and uncover? Well, I think that uh, there's a number of things. I mean, first of all is to get the facts out for yourself, and there's only one way to do that, and that's to go and see for yourself, not to rely on reports, but to look at things firsthand. Um, the second thing is to assess what the impact this is going to have on Africa, and particularly what is preventing uh, goods and services from this country and the region from getting to Africa. There's going to be a huge knock-on effect. Uh, in Africa, and particularly South Africa, if this continues. One in every three slices of bread in Africa and the Middle East is made from wheat that comes from Ukraine. Uh, with Odessa blockaded, it's very difficult for them to get the much uh, required uh, oils, um, fertilizers, as well as uh, grain out to the rest of the world. And this is going to have devastating consequences for our continent, Ethiopia, for instance, imports 36% of its, of its food and grain from, uh, from Ukraine. Uh, and so there's going to be significant impacts. And then th uh, thirdly, what the prospects for peace are and what that would look like and, and what the preconditions uh, of that uh, would be. I think it's in the world's interest. I think it's in Africa's interest. And I certainly think it's in our interest that this conflict is brought to an end as quickly as possible yeah. so that we can ensure that these devastating ripples uh, are not going to have a knock-on effect for, yeah. uh, for South Africa and South Africans. Let's talk about those prospects for peace that uh, you're talking about. I mean, um, you know the position of South Africa. They've taken a neutral position. Uh, we know your position already as, as you go there, uh, as, as the Democratic Alliance, that you, you're feeling this is an invasion by Russia uh, on, on the Ukraine. So one would say um, your assessment would be uh, hardly objective, maybe in a sense, because you're going there with a far-gone conclusion as to what, what is happening there. Uh, have you given yourself enough time to assess the situation objectively? Well, I would say this. Uh, firstly, I would say I don't think South Africa has adopted a neutral position. Uh, and I think that uh, they've, they've attempted to pretend that they've adopted a neutral position. But that's certainly not borne out by the actions. The celebrations on the night of the invasion at the embassy, uh, the comments and statements made by various ANC MPs, including Mr. Dugmore in the Western Cape, of support for Russia in this. Um, and government's refusal to, in many quarters, to call this what it is, and that's a war. Uh, today, 30 kilometers outside of Kiev, um, there, there are tanks that have blown up on the side of the road. There are residential homes and buildings that have been gutted. Uh, this is a war that's taken place. It's a conventional war, and it's the first war of the scale that's taken place in Europe uh, since the Second World War, and it's led to the largest displacement of people uh, in Europe since the Second World War. So I, I think that, that we've got to diagnose the problem correctly. Um, secondly, to say that um, I'm, you know, I'm precisely here to get the facts, and I'm going to be in Kiev uh, and surrounds for the next few days. I'm meeting with leaders present and past to have an assessment of the situation, how it got to this position, and what the prospects for, for peace are, and also how we can mitigate against the knock-on effects uh, in the global context, particularly for a continent like Africa, and particularly a country like South Africa. Yeah. The United States taking a position to continue to arm uh, Ukraine and give it more support in that way. In fact, the rest of the, uh, uh, the NATO uh, 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 aligned uh, uh, countries are doing exactly that. Um, do you think that in any way uh, exacerbates the, the war or brings closer prospects for peace? Well, you know, I, I believe that fundamentally we have to find a negotiated settlement as quickly as possible. Um, but that's not possible until the, the parties are prepared to come to the table and be able to do that. I think it's very difficult for, for that process to start while there are still advances being made into deep into Ukrainian territory in the east, while the port of Odessa is still blockaded, and while Mariupol remains under, under siege. I think that for, all, for us to start the process of peace, surely we would need a de-escalation of, of those tensions. I think that the armed support for Ukraine is to simply try and get a, a balance of forces. 
you can't have a negotiation between an elephant and a mouse. Uh, the elephant's always going to win. And so I think what the, what, the, what the NATO and other countries are trying to do is to try and balance the equation somewhat so that we can go to the peace table with hopefully a, a more balanced scenario. Um, and I really, you know, the one thing that's really struck me is the determination of Ukrainians, both ordinary people on the street that I've spoken to, including uh, leaders, mayors, uh, and the like, a strong determination not to allow their nation to be overrun or to be sucked into an imperialist uh, environment where, where they're treated as, as a colony. Uh, and I think that, that determination is, is going to uh, be crucial, I think, in the coming weeks and months to ensure that when we reach a settlement here, that it is one that is fair to, to all parties. John, we clear that you could come on, but final question as we let you go. Russia says uh, they're carrying out a military operation. Um, Ukraine says uh, uh, innocent lives, civilians have been killed in their thousands, actually. And Russia's response is that the Ukraine uh, behavior, uh, great, uh, great, uh, uh, the Ukraine army is behaving like, like terrorists. What is your assessment so far? Well, I, as I say, I've, I've been in Kiev today and I've seen where the missiles have landed in hospitals, in clinics, a children's playground that was blown up, uh, ordinary shops, and I've shared, I've shared pictures of this on my social media. Um, you know, this, there have been severe civilian casualties and severe civilian consequences for this. Uh, missile strikes that were meant for military targets that, that ended up hitting uh, large residential developments. Um, and it's, 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 a, it's really terrible to see the civilian cost of this, uh, having to see the families that are left behind and, and to pick up the pieces of loved ones that have lost, but also to have everything, every part of your life completely destroyed uh, in an instant uh, is really, I think, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's deeply distressing. And it's really been the hardest part of today is to see the, the civilian suffering and the civilian uh, destruction that's been done. John Sainz, and I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on, leader of the Democratic Alliance. Live for us tonight uh, in Kiev.